Uh, I want to welcome Mehdi Mutashar here tonight, and also thank you all for coming, especially those who were here yesterday for coming two days in a row. Uh, Mehdi Mutashar is uh, the joint winner of the Jamil Prize 5, along with Manira, uh, Marina Tabassum. And the talk tonight is really going to be kind of tracing his artistic life, in a way. Uh, not a career, because he says he doesn't think of art as a career, but rather as a kind of life um, in itself. So just to kind of start from the beginning of his artistic path and tracing it to kind of where we are today. Uh, so Mehdi was born in Al-Hilla in Iraq in 1943. And um, he then moved to Saudi Arabia, actually, as a young kind of young boy to work there and moved to Paris uh, at the age of 22 years, where he kind of stayed until he moved to Arles, which is where he's had his studio for a very long time. He was professor at the École Nationale Supérieure des Arts Décoratifs in Paris uh, from 1974 to 2008. Um, and he's exhibited in many places around the, uh, the world, in Bahrain, in the Czech Republic, in Denmark, France, Germany, um, in the US, and, and here several times. Um, so, um, in the words of Murad Muntazami, his work crosses the line between conceptual minimalism and metaphysical uh, uh, geometry. And he's very much influenced by the arabesque uh, and the maqam in Arabic music, the kind of traditional uh, maqam, uh, as well as mathematics as an abstract representation of the world, but also as very much the basis for how uh, we also understand our world and our universe. Um, so I want to just kind of start again to kind of trace your early sort of path. Uh, and I think it's a really interesting story of how you sort of ended up in Paris. So and, oh. Ended in Paris, like how you moved from Aira to Jeddah and then oh. to Paris itself. <laughs> That's an accident of life. <laughs> you, you mean? Yes, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I think uh, the, the, in fact, it's, at the same time, it's an accident of life, but it it's, it's expresses uh, the, the problem of our countries 50 years ago or 60 years ago, and with the, all the troubles, political troubles, political, socials, and the, uh, uh, all the young people looking uh, in a way or another to have, to, to go, to, to go on this path that's been called and still called uh, the, the Occident, the civilization. The, uh, so uh, this is the dream of all young people in that time. I, th I think it still is a, a dream of, of people who want to change something, to do something. To, so I'm not different from others, in fact. But the, the accident of life is uh, make it a little bit different. That's all. So I uh, left uh, Iraq and uh, to Beirut. In that time, Beirut was uh, our uh, the, the, our Swiss land of Arabic country in that time. And then in Beirut, uh, I've been uh, dropped in Jeddah in Saudi Arabia because of working and. Uh, in Saudi Arabia, I made another accident <laughs> that uh, uh, threw me in Paris. So it is, uh, it's in a way, it is uh, it's a chance. In another way, it's an uh, uh, accident. In another way, we can call it anyway. But that's it. I mean, I don't want to. Uh, I mean, that this is uh, how I arrived in Paris. <laughs> without knowing French, without uh, speaking French, without uh, knowing nothing about the French civilization. And I had to learn uh, everything. But the first thing uh, of all I knew by my studies, I knew what was the, was in the museums that I knew it because I studied in Iraq, in Baghdad. I knew Matisse, I knew Picasso, I knew all this. So I wasn't very uh, quite fo foreigner because Matisse was besides me. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a, a very big chance. Mm -hmm. The first pa uh, real painting I saw was uh, a, paint, a collage of Matisse, paper co uh, collage of Matisse. And that was, I was really uh, like uh, stop, uh, stopping breathe 
it was so beautiful, so great. Mm. And uh, life is going on and... Uh, yeah, so you told me the story of how you would practice Arabic with the French ambassador. Yes, in Jeddah. that's in Jeddah. <laughs> and that's, and how that's you by this way, in fact, I arrived in Paris. <laughs> and he got you a scholarship to the Beaux-Arts, and yes. then you studied there, and, yeah. and then continued, etc. And how do you feel that, um, I mean, because you're already teaching arts in Jeddah, and then you went there and you studied arts, so how do you feel that that kind of, did it take you on a different path in a way than, you, than you, where you were thinking well, of going? Uh, uh, in fact, the, the, there is uh, one thing I have to, uh, to say. The school that I was being in Baghdad, it was the, the Academy of uh, Fine Arts School, it had been founded by an Iraqi artist, uh, Khalid Jadar and Faik Hassan and others. And we were the first class, in fact, the first year of the school. And they brought a foreigner professor from mm -hmm. Poland, from uh, Yugoslavia, from Greece, from, they were a group of people. So the teaching, the, 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 the teaching that, that we received, mm. it was so, at the same time, experimental and so modern, N not modern, but very clever, that when I arrived in Paris, I thought that the, the Parisian school was very, very old-fashioned school. Mm. Uh, so, but the chance to be in Paris is the whole activity, uh, the, the whole activity, the museums, the galleries, the, 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 the artistic activity, mm. that you have every, every night maybe 100 uh, vernissage. Uh, in, uh, so as a young, I was, just uh, in, uh, imagine, imagine uh, that uh, it never, I never imagined that it could be possible to go to all this vernissage, to go to see all this. So I was, even I didn't know the language, mm. I don't know the culture, but I was really in my, in my bath. Uh, that means art. That's what I uh, always want to do. Mm. Um, and we're really, I mean, lucky tonight to actually talk in the gallery amongst your works so we can actually, you know, look at things in the flesh and talk about them. And you said you wanted to kind of start with looking at this image. Yes, uh, uh, yes. Uh, it's uh, my work maybe for some of uh, people who could, be, uh, could uh, look very strange and very... Uh, uh, but uh, I wanted to start by this uh, drawing. It's, uh, in fact, it's a grid in the manner of the arabesque. What is the grid? It's a grid based on a mathematic rhythm called one and a half. Uh, one and a half, it's a very old, uh, um, one of the very old maqam in the music, Arabic music. Why I wanted to start with this? Because in my practice, in my way of thinking, uh, let's say I'm not a, a, a traditional art uh, doing. Uh, I have a, uh, a kind of uh, trying to put myself between two words that are, uh, that are mine, that means my original culture and my actual culture. So I am no, uh, nowhere of them, but I am both of them. And I, uh, the, the idea of the arabesque, our understanding, a lot of people here in, uh, in our countries think that the arabesque is a decoration, it's uh, something very uh, simple, it doesn't uh, uh, merit to, to be looked as an art, but that's wrong. That's the arabesque is a very, very sophisticated and very complicated art, and modern art, and contemporary art. Uh, because if we take this drawing, I will show you on the the, the images. I did more than four years' work only with this grid. Different work that you will is coming and following. Why I wanted to, 
talk about this because it is a kind of potentiality. It's a kind of, uh, let's say, a kind of possible that everyone, m me included, can materialize it, can do something with it, can uh, um, uh, uh, create I don't like the word create, can build a work different, maybe with metal, with wood. This could be on the wall, could be in the ground, but in different way. And we, this is the sense of the, uh, the uh, f for me, the intelligence of arabesque. Arabesque is a conscience of space, this invisible things that surrounding us, that condition us, and we, uh, uh, we do it every day, but we don't think about it. Like, for example, if you buy a house and you want to make a pivoting the bathroom, so you need to know the form of your, uh, your bathroom and the size of your bathroom. Yeah. What you need? You need to make a grid of, uh, what is the grid? A grid is the basement of the arabesque. And this is a grid. This is a grid based on uh, one. This is uh, the measure of one. One and a half, one, one and a half, one, and repeat it horizontally and vertically and diagonally. But then I can, I can materialize this line only with wood or with bricks or with metal. And I can build a, a, a lot of construction with this. That's what we will see in another image. And this, this fact interests me a lot as, uh, because it's open, open a lot of possibilities, mm -hmm. but each possibility is something else, but it is also an, another opening. So it is like a thousand and one night is uh, one telling a story, the story telling another story, and the story telling another story. And I love this idea of and this is the reality of our, our imagination. And, and that comes, I mean, it comes back to this idea of your interest in mathematics. Yes. And particularly in the square. Yes. Um, which is, as you say, not a natural form. It's not a form found in no, nature. No, it doesn't it's exist a, in nature. But it's a very much an ordering principle for so yes, much of our absolutely. life. Uh, you know, be it in terms of geography or cosmology, yeah. uh, spirituality, the cube, yes. etc. Um, and also, of course, the black square, I mean, the square has existed, of course, in arts for, like, in Islamic arts for many, many years. Yes, the Arabic is built on, on, uh, on the uh, straight or cir circle and squares. Yeah, but it kind of entered, let's say, Western art history with Malevich and his black square, again, kind of like erasing, erasing history and kind of trying to start anew. So it, it also has this kind of significance in a way across many different registers. Um, can you just talk a little bit also about how you use it in your work? I mean, here it's obviously around. Yes, it's in it. fact, it's. Uh, you see, what I uh, 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 for a while we were speaking my arrival to Paris. In fact, um, the the fantastic thing that happened to me uh, when I arrived to uh, to Paris is immediately in that time there was opened in Paris in, uh, I think, in, last, uh, in the end of June uh, 67, opened an, a, a very, very big exhibit called uh, Light and Movement. And th this exhibit uh, was a lot of artists coming from, from all over the world. And one of them uh, uh, attracted, his, his work attracted me a lot was the artist, the French artist, François Morellet. And François Morellet, so I, after two years, I think, or after one year and a half, I wrote him uh, a letter. And uh, I met him and then tried to explain, uh, ask him a question. And he told me that, please, if you want to do something, first, you are coming from a great culture. Look first to your culture, and then study all what happens with your culture. 
This is a fantastic thing happened to me in uh, 68, uh, maybe 69, I don't remember exactly the date. And he was doing a work because in that he was visiting Alhambra in Granada in 53 and he was doing a work, something, you know, with, the, with like arabesque. And he was so fascinated by this. And he said, you, you see, look, look, this is, this is your culture. Look how it's fantastic. So I start to look to things differently. Mm -hmm. In the sense of before uh, people in, when we were in Iraq or other, but when I was in Iraq, some artist was saying, well, this is not art. This is a decoration, you see? And people from uh, Europe say, no, it's not a decoration. It's, it's art. It's a very big art. So Malevich, what, what Malevich did, the, the black square, in fact, then I discovered later on, I loved, I still love Malevich's work, mm -hmm. but then I discovered later on that uh, this way of thinking is a little bit differently, but had been installed a uh, hundred years before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And this is a big, a uh, big uh, questioning for in, in my mind. So uh, when I start with the square, uh, it was uh, that uh, kind of a little bit of hesitation, a little bit of, uh, but as far as I go with uh, the people say, oh, that's, uh, um, uh, you, are, you are coming to your origins, but you are in the modernity. So that confirms my, uh, my first feeling of what I was looking for. That is, I, know I wasn't satisfied with uh, what I saw uh, with, the, uh, with the painting, you know, the tra traditional painting. And, uh, so all my work, I started in that time, I started to study uh, the, wh wh why the uh, calligraphy being discovered how is arabesque was built? How is this, how is that, you know, all the question. And related to what I discover in European uh, culture. And in fact, it's, um, it's a kind of continuity of, uh, of culture. So can you talk a bit about your uh, choice of materials also? Because there's certain materials that are repeating in your work, which are like wood, particularly uh, the elastic wires, metal sheets, um, but also the color blue as well. It's a kind of repeating in many of your works, which we're looking on the screen also behind you. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> things uh, yeah, that are yeah, for example, this work is based, uh, uh, this work, the word Hue, it's based on the grid that I show you before. Uh, exactly the, and uh, no, this is not with the grid, another work with coming with stop. the grid. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, the material is uh, something different. The material is, I believe that all, any material has, has a, a power, has a potentiality. It's our imagination that gives uh, flow, uh, give to this, uh, Potentiality give it uh, give a reality, and this reality each artist has a different way of thinking about the wood, about the color, about uh, metal. Or my, uh, I always use a very simple material that I can handle. I can uh, fabric my own because I always uh, thinking of the economic. Uh, I don't want to do with, uh, to deal with things that I can't offer myself, like uh, buying a very complicated and rich material that is that are very expensive. So I start, in fact, to to use uh, uh, when I was in Iraq, I used chips gypsum as a, uh, to make engraving mm -hmm. on uh, because very cheap. I could go to the. Uh, to the um, 
euh, chantier mm -hmm. ou mm -hmm. chantier uh, work, uh, work, work site uh, work uh, shop you know in the, the building uh, 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 workshop and to get, uh, get a little bit of ch uh, chips and uh, put it on a glass and then you have a nice surface so I always working with a, a very simple material it seems a very simple material but I love this idea of uh, Uh, the metal is also very, uh, uh, I use the material, in fact, I use the material for another reason also. I wanted the work that I do with metal looks like the calligraphy at, as on the paper because it has no thickness. The calligraphy on paper has no thickness. Mm -hmm. And I love this idea that the, the work has no material because this, We, we think that is just painted on the wall. There is no thickness no of the shadow, material. Like no shadow, shadow, nothing. And th that's the reason that pushed me to use metal. It's one millimeter thickness. It, uh, it's nothing. I mean, it's not uh, in the contrary of the wire, uh, elastic wire, which is almost six, uh, mm -hmm. six millimeters, seven millimeters thickness. So these are... Uh, Uh, a kind of way of using simplicity, but using it in a kind of a complexity of, at the same time. And what about the color blue? Oh, the color blue. <laughs> in fact, I used this color for very, very early in my work, very a long time ago. And then in the 70s, I did a lot of uh, work with colors. And I start to eliminate, to eliminate, to eliminate. And then one day I discovered that uh, the, this blue is the last color that we see when the old color disappeared. So I kept this color because it is just before the black, uh, because the dis uh, disappearance of all colors. So I kept the last one, <laughs> the blue. But it's, it's, uh, it's a kind of... Uh, a language that I like very much is a kind of simplicity that, uh, because in, in the time I use a lot of colors, and uh, uh, but now I am using just really very few colors. It's this blue with different uh, variation of blue. Uh, but in fact, physically, uh, it is, um, uh, you know, this, uh, there is, uh, in the physic, there is a kind of ba barrier kind of wall, call it the, in the time they call it the Kodak, Kodak gray, gray Kodak. All the colors are behind the, this gray Kodak was the, called the cold colors. And the colors are in front of this wall called the hot colors, which is a little bit, uh, I don't agree with it, but it is like this being called. And uh, this, I like very much that the blue is the last one before the disparition of, uh, of the colors. It's behind the wall. I like, I love the things behind the wall. <laughs> uh, and you also talk about a lot about how your work relates to architecture and space and this idea of measuring space. Um, and I wanted to also kind of touch on one uh, sort of his, a chapter in your life where you... Um, where you were still in Baghdad and you met Rifat Shadirji and you started a kind of uh, relationship working with him that was also a kind of chance yes. uh, happening, an encounter, and if you could just tell the story of how you began to kind of conceptualize this particular building with him. and, and Well, in, uh, I met uh, Shadirji in uh, 63. I was a student in Baghdad and In uh, Baghdad, we don't have any documentation. We don't have, we d didn't have any, uh, you know, it's like any uh, poor country in that time. And we had, a, uh, I worked with a, one of the professors, he was po from Poland, Polish. He uh, te teached us uh, engraving, uh, lithography, and so. And he started to, t uh, to uh, talk to us about the Bauhaus. But we had no documentation about the Bauhaus. Somebody told us that if you go to ask the architects, 
uh, some architects. There was at that time uh, Qahtan Auni, who was a big architect. He died very early. And he was in that time building the uh, University al Mustansariya. And or Chaderchi. So we went to uh, Qahtan Auni. Qahtan Auni was very busy and said, I am not very intellectual. I don't, I am not very. So go to talk to Chaderchi. Chaderchi, he is, he is very. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, Chaderchi, he is very. Uh, he has a lot of knowledge and he has a big library. So go to, go to ask him a documentation about the Bauhaus. And we hear that Chaderchi in that time, he has a very bad reputation because he was very proud of himself. He, he coming from aristocratic family and he doesn't speak to anybody. And he was famous and rich and so, so it's not easy to go to see him. So I have a friend, I had a friend, and very good friend, who is a big artist, Shakir Hassan al Said. So I went to Shakir Hassan and said, ask him, uh, I want to meet Chaderchi, and uh, uh, he said, okay, I will take you to Chaderchi, and he took me to Chaderchi, and made Chaderchi in February, uh, no, Yes, in November, sorry, November uh, 62, not 63. And um, I met him again in an exhibit in uh, 63. So we start a small, very, very s small relationship. Then after that, I met him uh, by, ch by accident in London once. W what you are doing, where you are now, and this and so. So in 80, uh, 1981, he won a competition of making a very important building uh, in Baghdad, the building of Council of Minister building. Mm -hmm. In the same time, he won the, the competition, but before the, the one week or two weeks, he'd been put in jail by Saddam Hussein. Uh, so, uh, well, there is a, a lot of things uh, happened in that time. So Saddam Hussein took him uh, from the jail, out of the jail, he said, I want to, uh, to do from this building something very important, very... And he started to uh, make a group of work with American architects, with uh, Iraqi architects, and he called me and said, I would like you to come to be part of the team that I want to constitute to uh, do a work, to, uh, to think about this work. And we, and the, well, he asked me some practical things to see whether I'm fit of it or not. Uh, uh, then, so this job, uh, goes for five years. We tr uh, worked very hard because it wasn't making a decoration on, on the wall, an artist, uh, an architect inviting artists to make a decoration on the wall. It was a real reflection on what we can do for the ground, what we can do for the wall, what we can do for the window, for the garden, for the fence. It was a group reflection, and everybody gives, g give, uh, gives his idea. And the idea is mixed, and we choose the best solution, and the most economic, and the most face, and all that. So uh, this work was, um, I learned a lot. I learned a sense of uh, reality. I learned a sense of material. I learned uh, how to work in a group, because as an artist, I'm working alone. And all day, I'm alone without uh, speaking with nobody in my atelier. And, but now, when you are a group, you have to deal with 15, 12, 17 person. And they, they, all of them, big intelligence, uh, uh, big experience. And you have to. So it, it was a really big experience for me. And 
it pushed me to know more about a lot of things, like just I told, told uh, uh, Nora about, uh, for example, it was uh, in the beginning, uh, Rifat was uh, thinking of a, a garden in the front of the building. And he asked two um, uh, American uh, landscape architects to present a project for him in th this garden. And in the, when they present the, pro uh, the, the sketches of the project, and I wasn't concerned by this thing, but I just uh, uh, wrote a, a word to Rufat uh, and presented it uh, to him. The, the, my question was to Rufat, can you ask them, did they think that uh, this garden is in Baghdad? Did they think that there is no such more, uh, uh, no much water? and we are in a dry country. Did they think about this? So he asked them and they said, no, we just designed, you ask, uh, designed us a garden. And uh, so uh, uh, he asked me, uh, can you, um, uh, why you ask this question? I said, because I am uh, from the countryside. I know that there are rules in, the, in Iraq. So, I start to make a kind of inquiry, I telephone to, uh, to people, how, how you do this, how you plan this. So one, uh, one of the people I can, uh, can get in contact with said, in Iraq there is a base uh, logic. If you want to make a garden, plant first a date palm trees because it's make a shadow, it make a humidity, and then under uh, below, uh, in, the, in the shadow of it, plant trees, any kind of trees you want, and plant, uh, do, do this and do that. So this is an experience that make me understand that we can, do, we can do a lot of things, but we are conditioned by our, our uh, geography, by our culture, by our use, by our knowledge of material. And as an artist, I learned a lot of this experience. So, but you never actually saw the building, in fact. When no, it was because well, when we, the building finished, there are a lot of political uh, uh, events. Uh, say that I think the building being bombed. Yeah, so apparently the building is destroyed. I'm not sure, but some, some people saying that it's not, it had it been bombed, others said it's been bombed, I don't know really. Uh, uh, I mean, that brings me to another uh, story, which is that you actually lost a lot of your work and your archives and your sketches because your studio was flooded. So you lost a lot of material, uh, specifically relating to the building as well, oh, because yes. you had sketched all a lot of models, the uh, doors, lot of, uh, and the plans. Yeah. And, uh, but I still, uh, and I have a project, in fact, to publish uh, uh, about this experience, to publish the photos of the plans, for the the sketches and the models, and to and I hope that I can find a way to. Mm because myself, I'm not enough clever to, to do this uh, academic uh, scientific work. But uh, you, you actually lost a lot of your earlier yes, works and yes. you had paintings that you had done yeah. that were lost in your studio, yes. but you then decided to remake Yes, the this work. is so uh, the oh, image. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, this is an image of, of work that is originally being done by black and white on canvas, and I lost it in uh, 203 by the flood that uh, came on the, on the atelier. So instead of making it uh, again on canvas, it, uh, I find it is not necessary and it's, I don't feel uh, happy with. So I tried to, I did it by a new technique. I did it by laser cut on metal. So the, the in fact, it, what, it was the white, is empty. Uh, it's been uh, the, with the laser being cut and been uh, cut out, and there is a distance of four four centimeter between the surface of the work and the and the wall. 
and there is a kind of uh, something happens uh, during uh, our uh, movement in, in front of the work that uh, I like it very much. I love this idea of making a uh, new idea of the same, uh, I mean, uh, the same work. Yeah, so that, that was what drove you to remake the works instead of just leaving, leaving those ideas behind. Yes, in fact, the, these are things that I, uh, I did in uh, this one, I did in 60, 69. And I felt that it's, uh, uh, it's important to, to uh, do it again, but I didn't want to do it again by the, but it also make me an, uh, thinking of that I'm doing it now with a new uh, f 50 years happened before the distance, so I don't have the law to, the right, sorry, to, uh, to do it uh, mm. in the same way. And in fact, I lost a lot of, of archives of, it was very, very dramatic, but in the same time, it is, uh, it, I can understand it also as a, a chance to push me more, and uh, because going, and uh, going always walking always. as uh, the, uh, in, in front of me. So um, I'll open up to questions from the floor if anyone has any questions for Mehdi about his work or otherwise. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a mic, if you could just wait for the mic. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, you were born in 1943. That makes, you were born in 1943. Mm -hmm. That yes. makes you 76. Wow, you look good. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> very charming. Uh, well, I believe that uh, if you if you are using your body and your intelligence here and you are working with nice things, you, uh, it is saving you maybe. <laughs> You told us before that you only lived on water and what, what did you tell us this afternoon? You lived on water and air because you never had any money from your work. Or the, or the light of this afternoon you were telling me you had never had any money so you just lived on water but you still look incredible. So I second that. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, I think, uh, you know, it's doing, uh, for, for example, when you are a star to a young, a young artist in a different country, even if you are, uh, I mean, if I was continuing to living in, ba in Baghdad or in Iraq, we had not nothing. Uh, we had no money, we had no, uh, no material, we had. So the, the, the thing is, uh, I think th uh, uh, we had all of the chance to find things with, to, to work with paper, to work with anything. There are a lot of things uh, surrounding, us, we, uh, surrounding us that we can use to produce. Uh, uh, I, I see now uh, young people very, very happy, very rich, very handsome, and they're working with the computer working. I mean, th th there are things that we, can, we cannot even dream of it in that time uh, because we hadn't. Uh, so it is a part of, I think, the, the, of the duty of artists of thinking what is possible and to do what is possible. Mm -hmm. And I, I, in terms of material, in terms of uh, economy, in terms of society, uh, it, we don't need to, you know, to always doing, uh, uh, you know, a sophisticated thing to produce intelligent thing because the intelligence is, is not in the material. Uh, sorry, it's not in the technique. It's in the in the in our mind. We transmit it to our uh, to, to our material that we use. But if you had unlimited budget, what would you do? <laughs> I think I think I wouldn't like that. <laughs> uh, I'm very happy with. Uh, situation that uh, I can, ha I have my atelier and uh, uh, this happiness uh, that go to every, uh, to every morning to 
go like in this uh, laboratory and you mm. are you feel that you are uh, dialoguing with angels <laughs> <laughs> um, just one more question which was about um, how through your laboratory you how, came, how in your laboratory yes you started to work with elastic because oh. this is something i mean the tension in it and your relationship with the line and the way you choose to draw yeah. with this elastic in fact, is something it's very, very simple I was dreaming to do th very uh, things like uh, this, and uh, one day I, I have a friend. He's an architect, young architect. I uh, gave him part of my atelier, the first floor, and he came with his uh, material and starts. And I was jealous of his. He knows the computer work. Mm -hmm. I was jealous. I don't know all this stuff in a technical. So all the day I go to ask him, oh, uh, can you tell me this? Can you tell me that? And one day he said, he arrived with an old computer. I said, I'm, I give you three months to learn the computer. If you don't, I will break it in your head. <laughs> uh, so he learned, uh, teach me that in the computer, in a kind of program, you can do in one point, another point, and then the line is coming, tension, the straight line coming between those two, uh, two points. And I found it's fantastic. So I took an elastic wire. It was in the, in the atelier, and I just put two uh, needles on the wall. And it is, it is a, a straight line. <laughs> so it is, I was very happy with this, uh, this, uh, this use. It's, it's an unexpected. Uh, and it's very simple because uh, this, you know, you, uh, you, can, uh, you can take it off, you know? It is just uh, needles, uh, needles, and you, she was just, uh, and it's a kind of magic uh, thing happened. <laughs> Um, I'm wondering if you have any dream projects, dream projects. Dream projects. Yeah, you seem to be a dreamer. Oh, I am a real dreamer. Yes. There's been any projects? <laughs> I have thousands and thousands of projects. Is there projects. something that you'd like you can share, unrealizable or cannot be realized for? No. Uh, in fact, that's. Uh, I was teaching for 30 years. I learned from, uh, from teaching something which, uh, which is I know by the practice. Is, uh, but the students show me that this is what we behave, all, all of us. Is, um, in teaching, when you work with young people, uh, the young guy uh, or the go girl or, the, or boy, he has a genius idea. So he thinks, oh, I am a genius. He has a genius idea. <laughs> so it's finished. He is genius. <laughs> but an idea is not a project. A genius idea is not a genius work. There is a distance between the genius idea and the genius work. This distance is the, 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 the experimentation is the practice of every day, is the, the discovery that you do silently in, your lab, in, in the lab, in the atelier, in the work. And I have thousands of projects, of, uh, but maybe 10 of them, they are good. I don't know, but I, uh, for example, this big work. Grand scale? Yes, a grand scale for this big, big work that I that just, uh, who uh, uh, this one this work took me uh, more than seven years of work and one year of really materialize it do it uh, because I did it myself because I used pe uh, workers but they all of them they couldn't understand my my uh, uh, um, willings so I then I decided to do it myself do the wood cut the manipulating things and it costs a lot of money, you know. It, this costs more than 50, 
50,000 uh, uh, 50, euros and one year of working. But then what is fantastic in this case is that you have a project and you did it and when you finish it, you discover things that you didn't uh, thinking about because the reality imposes, imposes its laws. That means, um, for example, this is a big work, it's more than eight meter or nine meter, I don't remember. Uh, it's physical, it's uh, f a real presence of physical presence. And what I discovered that all the people uh, visiting the work, the first thing they want to do is touching the work and go inside, like if it was a, a building or a house. And then I was thinking, they are, they are in their right, because this is a construction. This is a space. And in the space, we went always physically to experiment the space. Because if you want to buy a house, we go to the house to visit it and to go inside and to experiment whether to see physically to improve it, to see that we are good or not. And the same thing happened with the, such a work, because it's, it's, it's a big work. And uh, those things I didn't think about. So the work itself, when it's finished, lear learns me uh, more about the initial idea. And I love this experience. Yes, please. Yeah. Why did you choose the word Hua? Yeah. Ah, the Hua uh, is, I love this word because it is very important word in Arabic language. Is Hua is, a, a, there is a, a sentence in Arabic, al-mar'u mir'atu akhi, which means that me, uh, you are in front of me, I speaking to you. Through what I telling you, or th my way of presenting, I improve my humanity, my experience, my intelligence, my story, and the same thing that you listening me, to me, uh, you uh, improve your humanity through this dialogue. So who is the one that he is in front of me that reflecting my humanity to me, by whom I am a human being? And I love this sense. And I love this sentence also. So I did this, choose this who because of that. And because also, because of mystic people, they was using the, this word to, uh, as, uh, to, name, uh, uh, to name God. They don't say Allah, they say yeah. Huwa. Yeah, the reference to him. Yeah. Yeah. I, lo I love this word. So for that reason I did it. Uh, I'm interested in your process. You say you work alone, but oftentimes um, it's nice to... I was what? You work alone uh, yes. in your process. I'm wondering if you ever share your ideas while they're in process with somebody else for feedback. Um, how do you sort of think about it as it's a work in progress until it reaches the final point? For example, you worked on this for seven years. Um, did yes, you bring people? seven years of thinking? I mean, seven it, years of thinking, yes. and how many and months? I did, I did models, I did experience, and uh, uh, well, I, I do, uh, I do, I did. And uh, for example, when I have uh, like uh, such a project, I uh, when I built it, when I exhibited it last year, uh, no, two years ago in Bahrain, I brought two assistants to help me to because it, this work is you can dismantle it. And it's uh, every piece of food has a code, a lot of codes. And uh, so I have two young artists who help me in, uh, in when I need, when I have enough money to pay them. <laughs> uh, to, uh, uh, so and this is one hand. And I did uh, uh, some work with, uh, with uh, for example, some installation with other uh, young artists uh, also. 
So I do, uh, I love this, but you know, it's a question of possibilities and economic uh, things. When there, if there is a big project and there is a possibilities, economic possibilities for sure. Uh, and I love also, we did uh, with some young artists in France, uh, group exhibits and we share uh, share ideas, so it, I, I love these ideas, yes. But the, the fact is, my history is I very often working alone. And, uh, I think your wife called you a hermit. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I have one more question. Uh, what are you working on in your laboratory now? What, what are the next projects? Um, well, and how, I'm how are you evolving? I'm preparing, uh, unfortunately, I wouldn't put it in the, I have it in the computer somewhere. Um, uh, preparing an exhibit in, uh, I have an exhibit in Germany in uh, 22, uh, 20, uh, yes, uh, 2nd of uh, September, next September. And I'm preparing for this exhibit. And uh, it's a new work with metal and um, laser cut metal and uh, mainly uh, it will be, it's in a big space, it's a, in a gallery, a big gallery, and uh, it's an old mill, uh, and uh, they have a very, and also work with paper, uh, an installation with paper, with dialing, um, the, um, uh, yes, uh, we, uh, we have maybe, uh, this, like something like this, uh, uh, an installation with paper uh, reflecting the light from uh, provenance of the light and drew forms, draw forms uh, by the uh, light uh, provenance. The direction of the light creates different yes, shadows. Yes, creates different forms. shadows, yeah. different forms. So that's uh, the pro coming project. And there is another project coming for next year in a historical uh, uh, abbey in uh, uh, France, in Bourgogne, uh, l'Abbaye de Cluny, which is a, a very important uh, historical uh, building. Uh, so the, I'm invited to do uh, an exhibit there. Uh, and uh, th these are the projects. Any other questions? Uh, so I just wanted to um, say thank you, of course, to Mehdi, yeah, but Mr. also point out we have in our library, if you want to find out more about his work, we have a few books of yours, which we're also bringing to the shop as well. And this one in particular is your most recent one. It's published by Act Sud, um, and it came out in 2014, but it uh, has a lot of your sort of works on paper that you were talking about, the ones that kind of um, work with light and other works. So yeah, if you want to find out more about Mehdi, we have resources. <laughs> So thank you very much. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Uh, thank you, all of you, to be patient. <laughs> <laughs>